Hey everybody, my name is Jason and welcome to another Babylon video. Today I am excited to show you a new feature in the Node Material Editor, and that is the ability to export, save, reuse, and share your own custom frames. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be good. If you are not already familiar with what frames are in the Node Material Editor, you can think of them as groupings of nodes or operations for the shader that you're building. And to show this feature off, I thought that we would engage in solving a problem that I often find myself in when I'm using the Node Material Editor. You see, we can use the fragment shader of the Node Material Editor to visualize data. It's an awesome way to be able to put a visual to a number. The problem is it's really easy to visualize zero as black and one as white and the gradient between zero and one but it gets really complicated when you start to think about values above one and below zero. And so I often find my time, myself getting confused on looking at black and thinking that it's zero and really it's zero or any values below it and the same thing with, with the color white. And so I wanted to be able to create something, a, a node or a frame that I could reuse myself to visualize when values are above one or below zero. So that's what we're gonna do today is create a custom frame to do exactly that. Without any further ado, let's dive right on in. So this is what we're looking at today. You can uh, find a link down in the description of this video to this exact uh, node material session that we're looking at. Uh, essentially, what we're starting with here is just data. You don't need to worry about these nodes. Essentially, I've just piped in some noise and given it some parameters so that the values are above one and below zero. And then I'm just uh, piping that straight across to the uh, fragment output here. And that's what you see in this preview window. Now, what we're gonna do, everything that we're gonna do today is essentially put a custom frame right here where this spline is to be able to take that data, split it apart, colorize it and give it some visuals to be able to combine it back together and show us visually when values are above one or below zero. So to do this, it's actually not as hard as you'd think and super, super fun to do to use custom frames. So let's dive right on in. The first thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna go type in the word vector and we're gonna want to grab both a vector splitter and a vector merger node, okay? So we're gonna take our incoming data, that's here, and we're gonna put that, uh, excuse me, I did these in reverse order. We're gonna start with the merger and then go to the splitter. Uh, so I'm gonna take this uh, value and I'm gonna put it right into the X value of the vector merger node. Then I'm going to take the XYZ output and pass that over to the vector splitter. And then I'm gonna take the X value and I'm gonna pass that back to the fragment output. Now you will not see a change when I do this. Uh, you will not see a change here in the um, preview at all. And that's because essentially what I've done is created a pass through. Now the reason I wanna pass through here is because I only want to have one single place where incoming values come into this custom frame. And that's gonna be this port, okay? These input bubbles right here on the left-hand side of a, of a, a node, those, we call those ports. So I'm gonna click on this port and I can actually change its name. So I wanna change this to input value. And that is something that I am going to leverage in the future because this is a, a essentially going to be the input value connection for a node or a frame that I'm going to create. Okay, so now we have our data being passed directly through so that we have one place to hook it up. Now, essentially what we wanna do is take this, um, this data here and we wanna split it into three different sections. Section number one is everything that is above one. Section number two is everything that is below zero. And then section number three, as you might've guessed it, is everything that fits right in between, between zero and one. So let's start with the easiest first. We're gonna grab a step node. Now, if you're not familiar, we've used the step node a lot uh, throughout our videos on this channel. It's a super, super handy tool. Essentially what it does is it takes uh, an input value, okay? and it will evaluate that value based on a threshold. So I'm gonna drag out a float here, and I'm gonna rename this float to be ceiling value. Oops, value, there we go. And then I'm gonna actually click on this port node right here, and I'm going to uh, give it the exact same name, ceiling value. So this is going to be how I know uh, where to connect a float to be the threshold. Now the upper threshold or, or my ceiling value is going to be one. I wanna evaluate everything that is above one. 
So the way that the step node works is it takes an incoming value and any value that is above one, or excuse me, any, any uh, incoming value that is above your input value or ceiling value, it will output a one. And anything that is below this number, it will output a zero. So when I pass that over to the fragment output, look at what happens. There, you can actually see now that that essentially is uh, everything that is above one, because it's done the calculation to say, give me return one for everything that is above one. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, so now let's do a similar thing for everything that's below zero. We're gonna take a step node. I will copy and paste this one here. Um, we're gonna pass in the same value, but instead of a ceiling value, we're going to change this to be floor value. And we're going to drag out a float here and we'll rename this to be floor value. Now, we want this at zero because we want to know uh, everything that is below zero. However, remember that the step node will actually output a one for everything that is above this threshold value, this floor value. So if I pass this over to the fragment output, what I'm seeing here is everything that's above zero. I want everything that's below zero. So what do we do about that? Well, we just take the incoming value and we're going to negate it. Remember that our incoming values go above one and they go below zero. So we know that there are both positive and negative numbers. And so we can negate our incoming value stream and pass that into this step node and watch what happens to the preview window here. It literally flips. And that's because we've essentially taken our entire value scale and flipped it. And so now everything that was below zero is above zero and everything that was above zero is below zero. So now our step node is evaluating everything that is above zero, but we know it to be everything that is actually below zero. I know that's kind of a trippy concept, but hopefully that uh, isn't too hard to follow. So we're going to move this over and pass our negate, put our negate node right here. So now I have steps one and two completed. In fact, I'm actually going to label this um, upper bounds and we'll label this step node now to be lower bounds. So we know that these two give us everything that is above our threshold value or ceiling value and everything that is below our floor value. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna take this ceiling and floor nodes and I actually just wanna move those off to the side because those are gonna be inputs into our custom frame, okay? We don't wanna include them in the custom frame because I may wanna visualize everything that's above two or below negative one. So we have the ability here to be able to uh, customize this to some degree, okay? And so I am uh, now have everything that is below zero and everything that is above uh, one. Awesome. Uh, so now we're going to go on to that third step, which is to figure out everything that is between zero and one. Well, this actually is pretty easy to do as well. I'm going to grab an add node because this is simply black and white or values of zero and one. And the same thing is true of here. When we add these together, we get essentially a mask of everything that is uh, a mask of everything that is above one and below zero. So then you can imagine that I actually want the inverse of this because I want everything that is between zero and one. Well, to do this, because I have values of only one and zero, we're going to use the one minus node. So what this does is it says anything that is currently one, I'm gonna say one minus one will become zero, and anything that is zero, one minus zero becomes one. So it essentially flips in the same way that the negate node used for us earlier, it essentially flips anything that is between zero and one. So now we have a mask that is inbounds. Okay, so we're going to call this inbounds. So we have an upper bounds, we have a lower bounds, and we have an inbounds. Awesome. So now we have the three different sections. Now all we need to do is use that and multiply it against values to visualize. So let's start with the easiest and most obvious one. We're going to go grab a multiply node here. And I'm going to take our multiply node, pass the inbounds to that, and pass in our original value, OK? And then if I pass that into the fragment shader, you will see that where this mask exists will flip to the gradient of values of 0 to 1, just like that. So now we know we have everything being appropriately passed through that is 0 to 1. Awesome. So now let's give some visual color to anything that is above and below, above one and below zero. 
Let's say that anything that is above one, we want to color blue. Okay, so let's go grab a color three. We're going to call this ceiling color and we'll give it uh, that blue color I mentioned, just kind of a lightish blue. And uh, we want to basically scale. We're looking for a scale node. Now, a scale, because a color three is essentially a vector three, uh, a scale node is essentially the same thing as taking an incoming value and multiplying uh, the x, y, and z, or r, g, and b components of a vector three by that incoming value. So I'm going to take upper bounds and pass that into factor. And I'm going to take the uh, ceiling color and pass that into input. Now, before I continue, I want to take this input node here and I want to uh, label the input port, excuse me, I want to label it ceiling color. Okay, that's going to be where we plug in the ceiling color because that is going to be exposed to uh, the uh, out, output, the, the frame itself as a, uh, an input port. Okay, so now if I take that and I pass that across to the fragment output, you'll check this out. I get blue for anything that is above one. Awesome. So let's do the exact same thing for below zero. I'm going to take a scale node. I'm going to pass in our lower bounds to that scale node. I'm going to remove, um, actually, let's change the port color first. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, floor color. And then let's go grab, uh, actually, we can just copy and paste here. We'll copy and paste my color three. And I'm going to make this, uh, let's just call it, say, a red color will be our floor. So we'll kind of do a uh, reddish color. And then I'm going to pass that to the scale node. And now let's check that out and visualize that. That is going to give us a red for anything that is below zero. Okay. So now you can imagine that if I have the three separate pieces, I have blue for everything above one, I have red for everything that's below zero, and I have my gradient that is everything in between, which is exactly what I want. Now I need to start combining things together. So let's go grab an add node and let's add the ceiling and the floor together and pass that in and we'll see a visualization of both the ceiling and the floor. Awesome, we're getting there. Now we need to combine it one more time with the original zero to one uh, gradient. However, you'll notice a problem. I have a color three now representing the, seal and, uh, the ceiling and the floor, but I have a single float value that's representing uh, the the space between zero and one, the color between zero and one. So I need to turn this into a vector three or a color three. There's a number of different ways you can do that. You can do that with a vector merger node and pass this into the X, Y, Z, and then take it. A, a cheap way that you can do it, uh, a bit of a, a cheap way because this isn't the most efficient in the world, but because this is a um, uh, debug node that I don't plan on using as an actual node, I'm just gonna grab a gradient. So a gradient will take an incoming value and it will pass out a uh, color three, okay? It will, it, will, it will give us a color three out the other side. Uh, and so now I have a, uh, the middle section is also a color three. And so I can grab one more add node. Let's just copy and paste. I'm gonna grab this add node and I'm gonna bring it over here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our zero to one and our below zero and above one, combine those together and pass that through and let's check out what happens. Boom, there we go. So now we have our incoming data. So let's take a look at what that originally looked like. This is our incoming data here. We don't know what's below zero. We don't know what's above one because it's just black and white. But because of the work that we've done here, now we can actually have an awesome visualization of exactly what's above one and exactly what is below zero. That's pretty awesome, right? Something that we can definitely utilize again and again and again as kind of a debug node that we may want to leverage in the future. So let's start to clean this up and turn this into a custom node to reuse, okay? I'm just gonna do some quick organization here just to make sure that this is um, nice and thin and uh, easy to, um, oops, I missed one here, uh, easy to kind of just wrap into a box. Now the colors, I'm going to drag out over next to the floats because those are both gonna be inputs so that I may wanna change the colors later. Uh, but essentially I have here all of the operation that I need within this section here to do this uh, calculation to visualize the, the data that I'm bringing into it. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna drag a frame around these, op th these nodes, these operation, and that is gonna be a frame. I'm going to call this OOB for out of bounds and I'm going to give this, just call it a dark green color. And when I collapse this, 
you will see that I have all of those ports that I took the time to label. How rad is that? So I'm going to take one step further, I'm gonna take this ceiling color and I'm gonna move it up because I can actually move these things up and down. So now I have my input value, I have my ceiling value or the upper threshold I want to evaluate and then the color I want that to, to show me. And then the same thing with the floor. And then the last thing here is I can click on this um, port name for output and I can actually call this out of bounds value. And there we go, now we have this awesome out of bounds node that I can leverage again and again and again. That is super rad. Well, to show you exactly how to leverage it, let's click on this exact node here and hit export, okay? Now, when I hit export, it's going to save that, but I wanna show you something. Up in our node list in the top left, you'll notice with a clear filter, it says custom frames. This is a section where you can add in and we will store your custom frames every time you load the node material editor. That is awesome. So let's click add here, we'll click the plus sign next to add, and I'm going to grab this OOB node and it will not work. Freeze? There it is, it came in, just took a second. Sorry, my browser actually froze for a minute. So let me actually now drag this in and check this out. Boom, there we go, that is the node as I've designed it. Check this out, I can actually expand it and that's all the work that we did with all of the inputs ready to be connected to. So all I have to do is drag in colors and drag in floats and I've got my evaluation. That is so cool, I absolutely love that. And so I've shown you how you can create a custom frame, how you can export that frame, and you export it as a JSON object, and you can save that yourself locally, or you can add it to the available nodes in the node menu on the left-hand side. That's amazing, right? Well, to take it one step further, because Babylon is open source and we're super passionate about contributing to the open source community, we're also making a node material custom frame repo in GitHub. So I'll have a link for that down in the description of this video down below, where you can actually find the exact frame, the JSON for this frame to add yourself if you want it. I hope you see the power in this and as are excited about this as I am. The potential is endless when you think about how you can combine complex operations into a simple, easy to navigate and easy to digest node. And then the idea that you can share that with your friends and reuse it in the future. And then, hey, maybe even pull in some other nodes from the community as well. This is what open source is about and this is so incredibly cool. And I am so excited about it. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned something from this video. Uh, we are actually, I'm gonna create a part two for this video as well. We're gonna have a little fun by creating some more custom nodes to pipe into the color to help visualize that and add a little bit of fun to this node. But you'll have to wait for part two for that video. Thank you so much for checking this video out. If you haven't already had a chance to do so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates. And again, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time.